Oh, I usually go live with wine. I don't have any wine. I'm feeling a certain type of way. Oh, no. Hi, puppy. It is toasty out here. How do I invite somebody? I know how to do this. I can do this. Uh huh. I figured it out. Ooh, look at me go, go. I figured it out. <laughs> Hello. Hi, darling. How are you? I'm wonderful. How are you? I'm doing okay. I can't complain. <laughs> what part of the world are you in right now? I am in um, Pikesville, Maryland. So oh, we're living in the same state. Be more in the house. <laughs> <laughs> a whole 301. I used to live in the city, but I came back. I'm PG County girl. Oh, okay. Yes. <laughs> All right, cool, cool, cool. I'm so happy and excited to connect with you. Me too. I'm looking. Look, I'm looking at the filters. Like, oh, this one is popping. Door out immediately. Started talking. Okay. <laughs> you hit that too. <laughs> yes. Period. <laughs> but I'm so excited to connect with you. You too. Thank you. I love uh, having surgery talk with people who are. Um, not just interested in the business in this industry, but who are familiar with this industry. And um, a lot of times people will get into the industry and if they get a little nugget or two, they usually start to, or they, not usually, there's the, the uh, happenstance that they'll keep it to themselves instead of using that knowledge to empower the next. So yeah. on this live, um, where uh, there's, when it comes to plastic surgery and I started calling it because um, plastic surgery has such a negative connotation to it. Yes. I call it a cosmetic self-love journey. Thank you, period. And so when planning a cosmetic self-love journey, there are eight different phases. Phase one is picking a doctor and a procedure. Mm -hmm. Phase two is budgeting, like how are we paying for this? Right. Phase three are your labs and your clearances. Phase four is where you come in. That is your accommodations and your care. Phase five is um, your prep stage. You're buying your supplies and booking your hotels or you're booking your, your flights. Phase six is lifestyle shifts. It's all of the things that you're going to change about your life after your procedure so you can maintain your results. Phase seven is the day before surgery, the day of, and the whole first week after. And everything after that is maintenance. Um, so before we deep dive into phase four, I wanted to open up the platform and introduce um, everyone to my guest. Her name is International Kells. Um, she's owned a few recovery houses, um, if I'm not mistaken, in and out of the country, correct? Or you ran them? So right now, out of the country. Uh, I am trying to work on some in the country. I've been talking to some different people um, who are telling me about places in D.C. that are now popping. Um, you know, Miami, I'm not too sure if I want to go that route just yet because we're going to get into, you know, the whole process of recovery house and how that works, but, um, mainly in, in other states, but I mean, other countries, excuse me, but I am looking into hopefully some in state soon. And then for everyone that may be joining us from, um, Kelly's platform, my name is Ty. I am an international massage therapist and, um, post-operative guru. I teach any and everything from how to get surgery and not die to how to get the best results to um, how to plan and pick out your procedure from start to finish. Um, in other so words, she's a bomb.com, period. Okay, in case you didn't know, international, we're international. This is what we're doing. It's how we're carrying it tonight. Okay, just so you <laughs> has always been and I think yours is too because I saw you talk a lot about credit and mm -hmm. getting your coin together yes recreational curses um so our platforms are shared platforms people who um engage with us is not always just about one thing or another 
So with that said, there's some people who may be turning in, tuning in who have no idea what a recovery house is. Mm -hmm. Can you shed some light on what in the world is a recovery house? Absolutely. So like you said, after you've gotten some type of cosmetic procedure, some type of life house, lifestyle enhancement, because like you said, there is, there is such a negative connotation on it. Um, people feel like if you get cosmetic surgery, you're not happy with yourself. Um, you know, you have some self-esteem issues. It's not about that. It's about the fact that, first of all, it's your money. Um, or if it's, you know, baby daddy's money or whoever's money, whatever. Don't matter. They gave you permission to use that money. But <laughs> this is <laughs> it's yours. It's your money. But it's about self-care. I'm all about self-care. Um, and what a recovery house is after you've had that procedure done, you can go and relax at a recovery house and have some additional services, have a 24 hour nurse or a doctor basically checking on you to make sure that you get the best results that you're supposed to get. Um, you get meals, um, you know, you have other women or men that are in the recovery house, depending on how it's set up, um, that have had the same type of cosmetic procedure. And, you know, you're sharing the same journey. So you're healing together, you're recovering together, um, you're getting that um, post-op care that you need. A lot of people don't plan for that. They say, hey, it, it costs, you know, I'm just throwing numbers out there, as, you know, depending on where you go, $3,500 to, to get your boobs done. And, you know, I can just go get that done. They don't know that you have to get, you know, your garments. You have to, you have to, um, you know, what you do or what you teach and what you have uh, focused a lot on is the, the massages afterwards because if you don't get that when you have your you know your your tummy tuck or your um your lipo you're not going to get the best result so all of that is housed at the recovery house um most of the recovery houses that i have we offer those services um but it's basically to make sure that you get the best post-op care that you need before you can go home um and actually continue to have good results so we do education um, a lot of a lot of the recovery houses do all the same thing. You know, they they basically just take care of you after you have your surgery, um, and provide you with uh, you know nursing staff and and meals to make sure that you recover the right way. Okay, awesome. Um, I actually typed up or wrote up some notes, so I was like, let me stay on track so I don't. <laughs> rest. I could talk this all day long, and we'll yeah. be all tangent talking about like people getting horse teeth in Turkey instead of focusing on recovery house. <laughs> but um let me <laughs> hi my name is ty i have no filter <laughs> okay, i love it so how it did in the world did you get into this industry because this isn't something that you just pop up and like right what offered at the career services department in high school when mm -hmm. i'm like college fair figure out what i want to do in my life how did you even come across um starting a recovery house so for those who don't know me that are you know from ty's pro, uh, platform I've been a real estate investor for the last 10, 11 years, maybe even more. I don't want to date myself too much because I don't want y'all to know how old I really am, but for a minute. Um, I started off in property management and I've always been interested in real estate. Um, I love looking at houses. I love looking at properties and I'm not going to bore you guys with all of the stuff involved with real estate, but real estate has been my love, my passion, my everything. Um, I knew nothing about recovery houses. I didn't know that they even existed um, until I went to the Dominican Republic for um, a vacation. And I'm literally chilling on the beach and a couple of ladies, you know, we're talking and they're like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I'm a real estate investor. You know, I do this, I do that. I want to get into, um, at the time, I wanted to get into owning like beauty salons. I don't know how I do hair, but <laughs> on the business side of it, I wanted to get into owning the salons and, you know, Doing, doing that whole business side of the process. And they was like, well, have you ever heard about recovery houses? And I was like, thinking for like alcoholics or drug recovery? <laughs> like, I don't know. What, what, what is that? And they're like, no, no, no. It's, you know, a lot of women come to different countries like the Dominican Republic. I think at that time it was really popping. And they were like, you know, recovery houses are you know, basically a real estate investment, you know, and you have women that come in and they pay like a hundred dollars a night. They stay for like seven nights. And I was like, hmm, okay, tell me more. What's going on with that? So they said, well, we could actually show you some properties. And I was like, okay. So 
Yeah, so we looked at some properties um, and they were so inexpensive and they didn't need a lot of work. Like I'm looking at what we have here, especially in Baltimore, um, in certain areas, honey child, but listen, um, I saw one house that had a whole tree growing through the house, roots, limbs, everything. Um, so I'm seeing the houses they had over there and I was like, okay, this is not as much work as it is, you know, and where I'm used to investing. And, you know, so I started really doing my research and figuring out how many women actually come here, what doctors do they go to? And I don't want to get too far ahead of myself because I know these are some of the questions, but that's how I got into just, it. Girl, just flow. Okay. So um, how many have you, uh, so you, you have one or um, are there multiples in the DR? Over the, maybe like 10 years? I have several. Um, I started in like 2018. And I started with like three, four, actually. I, I purchased, originally my plan was, I have four kids, most people know. My oldest just turned 18. She just graduated. All the things. Thank you. I'm so proud of her. She actually just left. Um, so. Step above a whole 18-year-old, sis. 18-year-old. No, no, I said you. Like, you and your skin. Oh, well, girl, listen. Self-care, <laughs> baby. When I tell you this <laughs> pandemic. 18. Oh, thank you. I love it. <laughs> People want to be friends in real life, for real, for real. <laughs> um, yes, but I'm all about self-care, like all about it. And I really, I'm not a makeup person, even though I have makeup on right now and I have this filter there. I, did, I never knew how to do makeup. So I've really gotten into really the whole self-care thing, the dermatologist, the skincare, all that. I'm off topic. Anyway, so I'm going to go back. Um, so, yeah, so, baby. I went over there to, and, you know, I started, I, my, my original goal was to purchase four houses, one for each child. And, I, you know, I'll purchase these houses, you know, I'll get some, you know, whatever income it is. And, you know, when they turn 18, they can have the houses, they can do what they want. Well, they don't want the houses, and that's fine. Um, so I just decided to get some more because it has been, like, literally insane with the amount of people that, you know, go to these these different countries, and I always thought it was so dangerous. But then I really started understanding. You have to do the research on the doctors too, because those are the you have to you know really figure out which doctors are going to be the best ones that you want to have kind of your name, um, because you don't want nobody to come to your recovery house from a a whack doctor and die at your recovery house. I don't want my name in the news in that way. No, so. Um, there were a lot of doctors who I did some research on, and I'm not going to name any names. I think some of them are in jail. And they wanted me, you know, they were giving me a lot of patience. And I was like, oh, no, 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 we can't do that. I connect with the doctors. What'd you say? Well, how'd you even want to connect them with being that you were stateside here and then the, the surgeons were um, abroad? Like, you go and buy a piece of property and you live here. How did they even know to be able to connect with you? So honestly, the agents that, and that's another thing I'm going to talk about, the agents that were there, because they knew this is what I was going to get into, they started connecting me with like coordinators. Okay. And those coordinators would actually book for certain doctors. Very dope. Very um, and at dope. first, you know, I didn't know what doctor was good. or what I, I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that as a real estate investor, this seemed like a really good investment. Um, especially when I looked at the numbers of how many people actually come to the DR to get plastic surgery done. I had no idea. And I was like, this makes perfect sense. Um, you know, I was all always about the Airbnbs and this, any other, but I right. always had, you know, different views on the Airbnbs, even though I do have them now and I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and more um, as things are picking up with travel. But um, I just wasn't sure about this whole process. But I'm telling you, between the real estate agent and now I have, you know, a property manager that basically handles everything for me, um, between her and the coordinator, they basically promote it. Um, they get the patients in, they coordinate with the doctors, they coordinate transportation. Um, I just basically pay everybody and then they send me my cut. Um, um, that, that's pretty much it. So you get to be a little bit more hands off than the average recovery. Like, okay, I know in the country, out of country is night and day. And yeah. what I want to get into is the safety measures of it. But it's just so mind blowing because when it comes to recovery houses in America, I know those inside and out. Like I could 
regurgitate that like the back of my hand, like it's nothing. And it's not the same experience and being like recovery houses owners are so hands on here. Mm -hmm. So they're constantly having to, you know, buy, cook, hire, fire, interview, um, pick up. Oh, someone didn't come. Crap. Let me get up out the bed and go do it. Um, mm -hmm. Issues, issue, issues, issues. Yes. If anything, nothing else. You sound like you just the property manager and you put other people in place and delegate to them for them to be able to run the recovery house, on, which is so freaking smart. It's not done like that here in the country. It's not. And, you know, me being a property manager by trade, even though I'm retired from that now, I kind of knew exactly how to set the pieces together. This is exactly what I need. I need it to be clean. I need it to be organized. I need to have somebody that I know can cook. I need to have nurses that are registered. And I continue to pay them throughout the year, even when I don't have um, customers. Uh -huh. Because I want to make sure that they understand I respect them, I appreciate them, and I don't want you to go nowhere. I don't want to have to go through that whole process of it's hard finding good people. And that's one thing that I know about business in general. I may not know anything about, you know, cosmetic surgery to that extent. I may not know anything about doing hair, but I know the business side. You know, this the yeah. And when you value them, they'll value your Absolutely. business, your property. Absolutely. So did you have anybody that showed you the way or you, it was like some, like with me, I wished I had a me when I got started in, in this industry, like 15 years ago, mm -hmm. it was a, a, a trial and error and then expensive trial and error. Like my mistakes came to me at such a hefty cost because I was like, I didn't have somebody like, Oh, whoa, pause. Don't right. do that. <laughs> um, that's, I, I think that's the reason why I kind of don't want to do it here because people are like, they don't want to share their information. And I understand why, you know, it's clickish, especially, you know, I was talking to someone. It's very well, People p would pay for it. Some people would just, even if you would want to pay them, they're scared and of I that competition or that you would become bigger than them or take their spot. Mm -hmm. No, they didn't bang with you at all. Yeah, they didn't. Even over there, in the beginning, I had to be there more often. And I, I actually had to stay over there for a while, a couple of months, to really get everything under control. So it wasn't like, I just purchased these properties and I just hired a property manager, hired maintenance guys to fix everything up, hired nurses. I actually had to stay there for some time to actually let them know, look, I don't know all of that. I know El Polio. I'm, I need some chicken. That's what I need. But let me tell y'all something. I ain't going to play about my money. So I'm going to need y'all to get this straight. Um, so yeah, it, it, it was a learning curve for me because I didn't know anything about it. And I had to kind of really rely on and trust the people that were there. And in the beginning, I didn't make any money because I was learning. Right. Um, so it took, you know, it took a while. It took a while for me to get to the point where I could say, I'm hands off and you guys got it. And I still, I still feel a little, um, I trust but verify. You know, with the pandemic, I haven't been able to be to go over there like I really should just to make sure that things are running as smoothly as they should. I mean, I know I get my payments every month and I know everybody seems like they're happy and we stay in constant communication. But um, I really want to be able to be there at least twice a year just to make sure, you know, things are, are good. That's the only drawback to doing it out of the country is that you're really relying on and trusting the people that are there to run it for you because you just... Now, somebody asked a question that I'm going to hold to the end because um, I do want to end with that information. I don't want people to come and just get inspired. I want you to be informed and educated as well. And then them know where they can reach you if they would be interested in investing in property through you in other countries or even locally. But um, my next question um, for you is, what are some tips? If you were to just be able to pick three tips to give, let's say, a client who's looking to pick a recovery house that's abroad. Let's say they don't know you, they don't have a me yet, and they're just like, all right, you know, I'm trying to pick a recovery house for this surgery. What are some things that is a quick, some quick tips you can give that they should look for? I think that, yeah, I think that they need to understand what the accommodations will be like. Is it going to be two people in the room? Is it going to be three people? Is it extra to have a room by yourself? Because I know me, when I travel, I want to be comfortable. I don't, even though I'm a, I, you know, I will talk to you all day about real estate and this any other, I like to go to bed at 9 o'clock. I don't want to be up all night watching this and that. You know what I mean? I, I, you need to know, understand what the accommodations are like. 
We want to make sure that it's clean. Pictures can be filtered, as this filter that I'm using that's popping. Um, you want to make for a second, some type of online community um, where you can look at reviews and look at the real story behind what's going on. Um, because if it's not clean and baby, you just got surgery, that is not good. Um, you don't want to get some type of infection. You already know you can't really shower, shower with that water. Um, after you, you know what I mean? So you want to make sure you have to really, really check in on that and also figure out wh what, For a second, I'm back over here. Okay, um, and figure out what the house rules are because a lot of times um, patients want to travel with someone, like a travel buddy, to help them, and I think that's good because you know, for some of the procedures, you have to be asleep. Um, you don't want somebody going through your purse, you know, taking your butt. You know, anything can happen, and if they are allowed to have guests um, in the recovery house. And that person is, you know, fine to walk around all night and do whatever and the doors aren't locked. You just want to kind of be, make sure you're as safe as possible because I've seen that where, and I visited other recovery houses undercover just to see what their, you know, situation was like. And it was just all type of people just walking around and people was wrapped up with the face and head, you know. Right. I, that made me feel very uncomfortable. So reviews, make sure it's clean, know what the house rules are. I know this is more than three. But this is serious. It's ser like it's a serious investment, um, and you want to make sure that you are going to not, you know, that you're going to be in the because a lot of people don't come back. You know, a lot of people get go down there and get these surgeries done, and they don't come back um, for multiple reasons. The doctor just wasn't good. The recovery house just wasn't, you know, whatever. Um, meal accommodations. I know that one person complained because everything was rice related and you know she's a vegetarian was a vegetarian and was like can i choose my meal accommodations can i choose other can i upgrade something so you want to ask all those questions you don't want to get stuck there um eating rice three times a day if that's not your thing you know you want to make sure that you ask as many questions about how i'm going to be fed how i'm going to be taken care of is there somebody who's going to be there 24 7 to help me in case something goes wrong what's the emergency procedure in case something goes wrong all those questions. Is there someone there that speaks English or French or whatever language that I speak that's going to be able to assist me? So, yeah. So I want to touch on something um, that I believe in um, maintaining healthy narratives. And there's because there's such a negative connotation with plastic surgery, um, there is a, an assumption or there's such a huge fear when it comes to surgery out of the country that in my past 15 going on 16 years, surgery in the country is actually a little bit more dangerous than out of the country. The stories that you do hear about when people don't come back, mm -hmm. really attributed to the surgery not being safe, but people not taking safe parameters to protect themselves. And that's not even necessarily um, just with surgery, that's in travel in general. And that's knowing how to travel abroad, knowing how to protect yourself, knowing how to look out for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you apply surgery to that, knowing which surgeons are safe and which aren't safe to go to, um, knowing the way that your health and your clearances phase three is handled in the country differs than out of the country. In the country, you have to submit all this stuff ahead of time. Mm. Of the country, they clear you right before your surgery. And a lot of that falls along something that we as Americans struggle with for you to be honest. Oh, wow. Okay. When it comes to getting surgery out of the country, they're asking you to submit your health history. And sometimes people are so pressed to get these procedures, they're not honest with their surgical staff. Wow. So I wanted to toss that out that like, if somebody doesn't come home, it can't, it's not attributed to because it was out of the country. There's so many different reasons as to why someone um, doesn't make it back. But it, most of those reasons can be prevented if we were to do small, simple stuff, like be honest. Be honest. Or I agree. Research I agree. <laughs> when it comes our procedures all right we talked about clients now what about if somebody was interested in um opening a recovery house or, or wait hold on what if a business owner so like you know i'm a massage therapist or what if you have a travel nurse and they're interested in doing business with a recovery house mm -hmm. everything that glitters ain't gold mm -mm. Mm -hmm. what are some 
doing business, like a business B2B, -B, business to business and interacting with recovery houses because just like what you said, like, I don't want to be associated with every single recovery house. Right. What are some red flags when it comes to a business owner doing business, connecting with the recovery house that you would toss out there to, for people to look out for? So if you're doing, I don't, I don't have a lot of experience doing it here. So I'm just going to speak for out of town. Um, <laughs> number one, you have to understand that most of the, and I didn't know this, the agents, well, agents that are in the Dominican Republic, they're not licensed. They don't have to be licensed to be a real estate agent. So you want to, first of all, do your due diligence um, and make sure that this is, you know, an actual property that you're purchasing is, and it's legal that you're actually going to have the deed, the title, everything that you need to operate. Um, okay. You want to actually start building a team. You need to understand that it's not just about, you know, the, the women that are, that are getting the surgery and getting this payment in. You got to make sure your accommodations are above, above standard. Um, that everything that, that needs to happen, the kitchen is fully equipped, you know, the, the restrooms, the bathrooms, the showers, the, the beds, everything that, that you need for your actual recovery house is, is, you know, above perfection because this is serious. Surgery is surgery, whether right. it's cosmetic or it's, you know, you need it for, you know, whatever it's surgery. You're someone is cutting into you. So you want to make sure that your recovery house is going to be well above standards. Um, and I will also say, just do your due diligence on every piece of it. Make sure that you have, you're connecting with the right doctors. Again, like we said before, you don't want to be associated with every, like you said, every recovery house. I don't want to be associated with every doctor. Um, I want to make sure that the ones that I'm referring to that will not me personally, but that my you know, coordinators are referring to that they are, that they have good reputations, that they're licensed, um, <laughs> that they have all the certifications they need and that they have a good history. Um, and I, I would say just understand that in the beginning, it's going to be work. You're going to have to probably be there. Um, you may have to learn a language if you don't know the language. Um, and it's just not going to, you know, think about, I always say with COVID, think about what else you can do with your recovery house if surgeries are not happening. Um, and you need to, you know, if you have a mortgage, you have other bills to pay, think about how you're going to pay your staff. That's one thing that, you know, I didn't think about. I didn't think about COVID. I didn't, you know, who, who did? Who, who thought could? about it? You know? Girl, me neither. <laughs> right. And I was so used to that, you know, that income coming in, you know, when COVID hit, I was like, Lord, what am I going to do? So, <laughs> when, you know, the recovery houses out of the country, well, at least the ones here, they have to be registered assisted living facilities. Is that the same out of the country? So, yeah. So we were, we actually were able to use the recovery houses as recovery houses for people who had COVID, who were recovering from COVID. So actually, we were actually able to use them as hospitals. Um, oh. Yeah. So, you know, the government actually paid us to use our spaces. Oh. Yeah, we were able to do that. Um, well, thank goodness. Or or license correctly. <laughs> you weren't doing surgeries for a little bit, so the space and the beds were available, and then the, were there. It was imperative that they were licensed because then you would be able to have um, sideways lateral income coming in from it. That's so smart. Well, thank you. Yeah, you were the government girl. Uh, well, actually, it was an RFP that came out um, because I do a lot of government contracts anyway, and I was like, oh, okay, wait, I volunteer. We can do this because there's nobody there, so. Um, so yeah, we actually won the RFP to have our um, spaces used. We were licensed. We were everything was good. They came in and checked everything out, and they were like, "Yeah, we can, we, we can, we can rock with this." So, all right. So before we jet, because um, if I always want to leave people with more than what they came in with, if somebody interested in, they don't even necessarily have to follow in your footsteps, but if they were just interested in breaking into this industry and opening up a recovery house, taking their coins, they got a little couple dollars, investments, they got them a bag or two, mm -hmm. and they're like, All right, I want to open a recovery house out of the country because it's honestly a little bit easier than the red tape we have here in the country. Yeah, it is. Hey, contact steps that you would encourage someone to take if that's if they wanted to take that plunge and be like, all right, I'm going to do this. Build your team. 
number one is build your team. You got to have a strong team. You got to have someone who, again, it's going to be your property manager. You got to have your nurses. You got to have your cleaning staff. Your cleaning staff is like one of the most important because we've talked about this. It, it, it just, listen, it needs to be clean. Um, and you want to make sure that you understand fully understand the process of you know what your what your house rules are going to be what the what the actual um, licenses that are required what permits you need um and you want to actually start one thing that i do because i'm getting ready to do, hop on a new, a new venture is i'm going to hop around to different you know spas or whatever you want to hop around to different recovery houses see how they operate um and you know mo a lot of them may, may or may not let you in um but you can go on I'm here planning out my surgery. Can I? I think I want to. Yeah, you have to let them know. Step that. That's but that's what I did. I was like, I'm, you know, I'm here to plan out my surgery. I just want to, you know, come and take a look, see how, you know. So yeah, I, I told a little, a little, little favor, whatever. But I needed to do that because I needed my for my own sanity and my own peace of mind and my own research to understand how they looked, how they operated, um, and get you a good coordinator because a good coordinator is going to keep you paid. That person. Um, I'm an advocate with you. What does a bad coordinator look like? Hmm. Not responsive. I, you know, I call a lot of different. I still do research, and I call a lot of different places to ask questions about different procedures or whatever, and no one gets back to me. It's like, look, this person is interested in some type of surgery. They're calling you. They're, you know, they're. I have Google um, AdWords or whatever out there, so if somebody Google's breast surgery the recovery houses that i own will come up like oh if you're getting this surgery done come stay here um our coordinator will see that and she'll reach out she's a very aggressive she has a whole staff of people that are just like we're not going to really wait for you to contact us we're going to call you like hey it looks like you are she matches your hustle yes yes someone that matches or a company that matches your hustle there are plenty of companies um in the different places you know Cali, columbia I, I heard that they are now really picking up with different mm -hmm. surgeries um there are coordinators out there my well if you if you want to go to miami um one thing that i did do was i actually uh took on a position of a coordinator for a while just okay. to see what it was like and what you know what they have to deal with and this any other but you want someone that's going to be responsive aggressive matches your hustle gets people in the door refers 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 closes the deals and make the person feel comfortable this is it's nerve-wracking to have surgery done I just had um, dental surgery, so my, I'm still a little swollen. And it's nerve-wracking. I, I don't like it. So it's like I need someone whoever's going to, you know, welcome me in to make me feel comfortable and make me feel secure that this is the right place. And when I come back from having this done, I'm going to be able to relax and enjoy my pain and my whatever. Somebody asks, what is, um, what amount can one open a recovery house with? So if there was a starting amount, a starting number, before they step to you and be like, all right, Kelly, I want to do this. What doc number do they need to have before they come up to you? Well, you're going to have to, of course, either purchase the property or, you know. Which will vary. Yeah, which that price will vary um, depending on where you want to do it. It can be anywhere from, you know, $50,000 to, you know, um, You're probably going to have to remodel it. So that can be another twenty, thirty thousand. 30000 um, depending on what is already in the space. Um, and then you're going to have to, you know, buy certain equipment. You're going to have to keep the, the, the place stocked with, with different things, um, syringes, uh, got, you know, different things medically that is needed for the recovery house. Right. You think about, yeah, paying your staff, you know, you have to have the nurse, you have to have the cook, you have to have, um, Again, a cleaning company to, to keep it clean. You have to buy the beds. You have to purchase um, basically everything that you would need for an Airbnb. You're going to need for a recovery house. Everything. All the furniture, all of the plates, all of the everything. Nobody wants to go away and eat off a paper plate. If and I'm then, paying it all the night. You know, it's like, hey. Somebody, right. I had uh, a client that I work with when she was opening up her recovery house in Cali, Columbia. And she started off, and I think to purchase it, it was either fifty or 60000 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that I say all the time and it, I, I guess it really I mean I know it applies to my industry but I think everything in this industry it applies to surgery is not a broke girl sport no. surgery 
whether you're helping the people who got the surgery, whether, uh, you know, with massages, whether you're buying the recovery houses, everybody in this industry got to have a coin or two. Yes, you do. And you, and you know, mm -hmm. I talk about business credit all the time. If you have an LLC, if you have a S corp, a C corp, a sole proprietorship, whatever it is, Start building that business credit now if this is something that you're interested in so that in, you know, four to six months, you're not using your own money. You're using the business credit that you built and you can say, hey, I have $250,000 line of credit because I've taken the time to build my business credit and I'm not using my own money. I'm using the other person's money and I'm paying, you know, a 2.5% interest rate over the next 20, 30 years or whatever. And it's very easy to do that. You know, I talk about this all the time. I don't really teach classes anymore right now because I'm working on some other things. So I'm, I'm hoping to resume them and maybe August well, or so. Girl, the SBA got them. If they really, truly want to know, go to the SBA. You can get a loan from SBA. You can mm -hmm. learn. Mm -hmm. There's so many other resources where you could go to. Yes. So yeah. you can take now, somebody wanted to know if you were interested in um, any investors where if they just wanted to kick you money and then you get the properties and they could be a silent, I guess, a silent shareholder. Is that something that they you would be able to um, assist them with if they were interested in getting this industry but wanted to be a little bit more hands off? Absolutely. I've already I already have a team built there. You know, if it's if it's in a Dominican Republic, if it's here. You know, that's something that we will have to talk about because I don't have, I'll be honest, I don't have a team here in place that I can say, yes, let's, let's do it. I'll, you know, I'll help you. I can want to, I can, you know, find people to build your team for you and do all that. But absolutely. That's something that we can talk about. I know Ty now. I know a couple of other people that. Yeah. We like virtual best friends. <laughs> yes. Yes. So we can make that happen. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Thank you so much for having me. Yay! This was so much fun. Like, yes, it was. I, have, I never go live. And now that I know I can do filters, I'm like, hello. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so I just came from my daughter's track meet, so I'm all sweaty and whatnot. I'm like, oh. You still look cute, though. Between business and surgery, we can sit up here and chop it up all day long, girl. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. All right, everybody, if you are interested, if you have any other questions, you can reach Internationally Kells on Instagram. Um, are you on Facebook and or Twitter, darling? Yes, I'm on um, Facebook. It's just Kelly Swan, K-E-L-L-Y Swan with two N's. I don't, I'm on Twitter, Kelly Swan one. I don't really tweet like that. Um, but you can find me on IG and Facebook all the time. Okay, and then Juanita, uh, no, we weren't necessarily deep. If you are in any way, shape, or form interested in re surgery and recovery houses, everybody knows the, the main issues when it comes to recovery houses. So we weren't going into the, the big issues. Um, we were more so talking about the investing in the business side of it. We did speak for a little bit on if somebody was interested in, in a recovery house, what you should look for and getting those responses from a business owner. But for the most part, this was more so for the, the business side um, when it comes to being a business owner running a recovery house how to get started how to get into it girl every other blogger in the world and talk about all the recovery houses and and how they suck he, we brought this here to talk about what the ones that don't suck and how to run that doesn't suck so no that's that's not what today was about like, hey, hey i asked the question in the question box and I, I just went back and seen it i was like nah that <laughs> all right baby girl will you have an amazing evening you too thank you it growing with you and then you go with you some sleep you have yes, I, i'm literally gonna take a shower and go right to bed it's what 8 40 i got 20 minutes till bedtime okay love y'all girl talk to you later <laughs> bye, bye.